You see that? Yep. Okay, so the first thing is, is uh, how to log in. Um, if you've never logged in before, um, it's gonna be over on the right hand side and it says user options. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and sign out so that we start fresh. Let's see. Um, if you're not already signed in, when you click on user options, it's gonna say sign in. So when you click on that, it pulls up a sign in screen if you're a district employee, it's already connected to your user login and password that you use for your computer. If you have a student who's going to help you with your web page um, and you're doing a club, you can create them um, a login. Um, and we just use their student email and they'll only have access to your stuff. So like they can't go in and blow up the website. It's impossible. Like I restrict how much they can have access to. Um, so you're going to log in right there. And then um, when you say sign in, it actually doesn't look any different, except now if you were to click on user options, um, now you can usually see three drop downs. So I have site manager, my account and sign out. Um, so that's so that Deanne doesn't have to hear me talk for a while. Um, okay, so oh, there's someone who's trying to join. Oh, this looks like this is a student, good. Let's empower these kiddos, take care of stuff. Um, so now what you're gonna do is, most of you guys are looking at club stuff, except for Rachel, are you looking at club or are you looking for your own? Uh, I'm doing science fair. Oh, okay, awesome. So what we're going to do is um, you would come to activities page once I've created you a page and then let's pick one that I know has has some stuff on it. What has some stuff? Pals probably has some stuff. Oh, but oh, they're under student leadership. So when you click on a page that you have access to, you'll have a gray bar that says edit page. Do you see that? So if it doesn't say gray and have edit page, then that's not a page that you have access to edit. Um, I have access to all of them. So any page I click on is going to have that gray bar. Um, but if you somehow encounter a page that you're like, hey, this should be my page and I should be able to edit it, um, let me know and I can fix permissions. But so you will actually go to the page you want to edit in the website once you've logged in and then click on edit page and it will take you to the back side of everything. Questions so far to there? Nope, okay. So when you click on that and it opens up your pages that you have access to edit, for some reason, it opens up the first page. Like, I don't know why, it makes me crazy. So if you click the X right there, it'll go away. So this is what it looks like on the back end of your web section. You guys really have, it's a whole section that you're in charge of. Um, and it's going to list all the pages that you have within your section. So right now, as when you get a fresh web page, you only, it comes with one. So you start with one. And if you want to add more, you would just go to click new pages. And the steps that go along with this are you just have to give it a name. I'm going to call it test and Kelly delete. And there's all these different um, templates that are already created. If you want to play around with those, I hate templates because I don't like how any of these look. So I always, always, always use this flex editor because it can do anything. Um, so the flex editor is pretty much like a blank page that you can put anything on. So we'll click that. Um, and that's the one that we'll play with in just a second. So looking at this list of current pages, you'll also notice that on the side it says status and then some say active and some say inactive. And that's really helpful if you wanna go ahead and start working on a page, but you're not ready for it to be public or maybe you have kids working on it and they need to show you what they've done or something like that. You can, all you have to do is click on it and then unclick it. Like that's, that's all the extent of how to make it active or inactive and that makes it show up live for the public or be you know inactive so you can only see it on the back end um, so that's pretty helpful 
there are a few little things that you can do um, within each page that's listed off to the right hand side under actions. There's a couple of options that you could do. If you ever wanted to change the name, you could do a, a change the name. Um, if you wanted to make it go away at a certain date, you could do a stop date. Those are things that you could just kind of play around with if you wanted to get like really granular on that. So if you're doing a new page, you click new page and you put in your, your name and then you pick what kind of page and I already told you flex editor is really good. And then you would say save and continue. And now you have please a blank slate to work with. So if you've ever done any kind of like app development or I guess now web pages in general are like this, all you have to do is come over to the side and look at all the widgets and then you drag and drop what you want. So if you just want an empty container for kids to write text, you would just pull a content container over. Maybe you want a link to your club's Twitter, you would drag that over. And so each container, when you hover over it, gives you a little edit button and it'll open that particular container up and you'll be able to add anything. It's very similar at the top to um, Microsoft Word as far as um, bold and italic and whatever. You cannot change the fonts, like there are no font choices. So the font is what the font is, and you can't even change the sizes really, except for small, normal, large, and whatever. There's a couple of default um, styles, and this is like if you wanted a box and then you wanted to type in it, it, it comes out like that, and then you can adjust um, you can make it larger. So you're very limited on design choices within this, um, which sometimes is good and sometimes it's annoying. Um, but it's a lot like Word. If you're working with kids, they're going to figure this out so fast. They're going to be like, this is how you do this, 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 and this. So it's alignment, it's font colors, you can add in pictures and all that stuff. Um, but you just have that little toolbar. So once you have put something in that you like, all you have to do is press save and then click the X button and now it's updated. Now when you see the preview on this back end, sometimes it looks wonky because it's like a preview of code. So it doesn't look exactly right, um, but it's there. So if you wanted to like open it and see like, oh yeah, that was in blue. But when you look at this side, it just gives you kind of a preview. Um, so all these other things, like if you wanted to share your Twitter, you just put in your Twitter name. So the apps are really pretty cool um, as far as all the things that you can add. And you can look through because there's pretty much one for everything. There's a Facebook, there's if you wanted to have discussions within your club page, if you wanted to pull embed code from maybe like a Google form, if you wanted to link to a Google form or lots of different forms all the apps are right there so the default layout on your page is just one big old square so if you wanted to have columns of content or even like bars of content click off of the apps onto layout and then you have more choices of where to drag and drop those apps and it just kind of gives you a little visual so you can see where you're dropping stuff so once you've played around with this, you've figured out some different apps, you've put in some content. Um, if you ever want to see what you have done so far, you would click over, it's the tiniest little thing you've ever seen. It says view website, and it will show you what you've just done, um, as long as you've saved and the page is active. Um, so that just gives us a look of what we have. So you'll notice that right now under student leadership, they have, five active pages and if we went back over here and we counted we could see one two three four five active pages so they have a lot more that they're working with on the back end they just haven't published it and they might publish it throughout the year or it just might be old and it's they don't need it anymore questions so far i think we only have like three minutes left um the other thing i was going to tell you okay i told you how to add a, i told you how to log in i told you how to add a page um, I told you how to organize that. I told you how to add an app. The only other thing that I would probably want to make sure that you guys know is that with anything that has to do with the website, because we are connected to the school, we need to be in ADA compliance. And so the biggest way that that comes into play with web stuff is that we have to um, 
We have to be careful about what pictures we post because if you post a picture, you need to make sure that you put um, the words that describe the photo. Let me see if I can give you a sample. And it, it has a little space for that as well. So say I was adding, there it is. So say I was adding in a picture, it's going to require that you put in alternative text so that a, um, a screen reader could pick up that and read it to a person who is visually impaired. Um, so you just might think about if you have students who are uploading pictures that they can't just put like gobbledygook letters, like it needs to legit be like photo of pals at pals camp. It needs to be somewhat descriptive. And also if you make um, images like in a canva or something where you have a photo with words on it just keep in mind that a photo reader is not going to be able to read the words in a photo it's it's going to have to read that alternative text and so sometimes we get dinged in our ada compliance when they do like a script and they're like these photos don't have text associated with it so that's just a good practice to get into all right, is that enough stuff to learn in 15 minutes? Are there any questions that I could answer right away? They give you enough to be dangerous now. You can go in and start playing around. Um, yeah, like, yeah. Pretty good, Tara, good? Yeah, it's good. Um, I'm just sitting here thinking, um, you keep saying stu students do certain things um, I probably missed it, but students are allowed to do this too, or? Yes, if you have a student leader or even a kid, you know, a kid in your organization who wants to take this on, if you send me their name, I will give them access to your one tiny part of the interwebs and they will be able to only edit y'all's pages. So they won't be able to mess with anybody else's stuff except for y'all's. So if you have someone that you trust with that responsibility, that is perfectly fine. Okay, that sounds awesome. We love to delegate. We do. Any other questions about this? Kids get it kind of intuitively, like they figure it out because you just click around on a bunch of stuff and then it makes sense. Um, but the, big, the biggest thing that I like to do is make things inactive while I'm working on it. And then when it's ready, go ahead and plus, press play so that you have time to think about it and get it ready. But. All right. Yeah, since there's no like course content on here and this is really just the fun stuff, I think there's a lot of flexibility. Um, but yeah, y'all send me names if you wanna associate a kid with your group. And then other than that, um, you can tell them to ask me questions if they have website questions and I'm happy to help them as well. Okay, good. sounds good. Okay. All right, you're free. You. I told you 15 you. minutes. <laughs> very helpful, so thank you very much. Okay. Thank we'll you, Kelly. Y'all yeah. later then. Bye. Bye.